In this episode of Prop 3D, we get started on the Boolean Gemini Scout Rifle Prop Build. I'll model, print, and finish the small scope piece as a proof of concept for the rest of the prop build. Follow along! This is how you know I'm recording in the evening. Welcome to Prop 3D, your look into the world of prop and costume making using 3D printers. I'm Bill and today we're kicking off the Boolean Gemini build. This is gonna be a 10 episode series where I build a giant gun from start to finish. And today I finished part of it. The Boolean Gemini is one of my favorite looking scout rifles from Destiny. I'm really excited to build it. And this part that I finished today, this little guy right here, hmm, this is kind of a proof of concept. I tested out some materials and some techniques and this is kind of going to set a benchmark for the rest of the build. So follow along as I guide you through the process of modeling, printing and finishing this little fella. Now I was able to get an STL file of the gun, this is a low poly model of the gun from the game. There's a website for that, I'll have a link in the description. I also converted that file to an OBJ file, again website down below. That OBJ file is a generic three-dimensional file that can be dumped into any number of programs. I used Maya, you could use Blender. Uh, from Maya, I was able to get some nice orthographic views of the gun, and then I could start making my own models. The modeling for this project is gonna be done in Fusion 360. So I took my reference images and I dumped them into Fusion 360 and got to work. Now this scope is a fairly simple model. Mostly it was a combination of sketches, extruding those sketches, using booleans to cut out different parts of the object, and some fillets and chamfers. If you're looking for a beginner's look into 3D modeling with this kind of software, check out the video I did a couple of weeks ago. I'll put a link down in the description. Now, this first model was printed a handful of times. I did one PLA print and another ABS print because I wanted to compare the two materials. They both came out really nice using the Ultimaker, but I ended up settling on the PLA because I liked it a little bit better and it prints a little bit easier. I went back into Fusion 360 and tweaked the model just a tiny bit. There were some gaps and holes in my model where it was a little bit too thin. Then I printed it one more time. Other parts of the scope, like the aiming reticle, were printed on the Form 2 printer. This is a resin-based printer that we'll have more on in the coming weeks, so look forward to that. This printer has a transparent resin that came out really, really nice. There are also some tiny screw heads on the side of the scope part. Those were also printed on the Form 2 because they're really tiny and this thing does detail like a champ. Now, of course, I could have laser cut the reticle and I could have used real screw heads for this project, but I'm trying to do everything as completely 3D printed parts just to challenge myself. With all my pieces printed and the support material removed, it was time for sanding. Lots and lots of sanding. The reticle was wet sanded down to a 1200 grit finish and then polished with some plastic polish. This turned out all right. I may go over it again later to get a really clear, smooth uh, finish, but for now, this will have to do. The scope body was sanded down with a 220 grit sandpaper. For some of the hard to reach spots, I used small needle files. These are really necessary for this kind of small model work. I also use small sanding twigs. These can be modified to fit your needs and are invaluable for getting into tight areas. Any spots that I couldn't sand flush were filled in with a little bit of air drying spot putty. Once that dried, I could sand it all nice and smooth. All this sanding was done to remove any print lines left over from the 3D printing process. Once it was as good as I could get it, I sprayed down the piece with a couple of good layers of an automotive filler primer. This stuff will fill in any remaining low spots. When it was dry, everything got sanded again, this time with a 400 grit sandpaper to get a nice smooth finish. This took care of any of the remaining texture and prepared the piece for paint. Speaking of paint, the scope is supposed to look like a dark gunmetal finish, so I opted for a buffable metalizer lacquer. This stuff goes on super nice using an airbrush, covering the part very easily. I made a quick little stencil with some masking tape and sprayed a lighter stainless steel lacquer over the screw heads. After this lacquer dried for about 10 minutes, I could buff it with a paper towel, revealing a nice shiny metallic sheen. This finish is really hard to beat and it completely transforms the surface. There was still some work to be done on the reticle. It's got some deep lines on it that need to be colored. So I watered down a little bit of acrylic paint and brushed it into those lines. 
Then I wiped away the excess paint, leaving only what I needed in the deep grooves. Once that was dry, I could spray the whole thing with a clear gloss spray paint. With the parts all base coated with paint, I can put them together to see how it looks. And I gotta tell you, I'm really happy with how this little guy turned out. This really does set the standard for the rest of this build. Now I'm gonna hold off on gluing everything together and adding any weathering paint until I have more of the gun built. But so far, it's off to a great little start. And there you go, that is part one of this build. Obviously still lots to do. We got roughly nine parts to go after this. I think next I'll do the handle so that I can make sure that it's scaled appropriately and that it will fit in my paw. As always, all of the tools and materials that I've used for this build will be linked down in the description. And a special thanks goes out to our friends over at Matter Hackers. They'll be supplying the filament for the bulk of this build, and I couldn't thank them more. They're really great. In fact, if you use any of the Matter Hackers links down in the description to buy 3D printers or filament, then we get a tiny cut, so you get to help two companies at once. You are a wonderful human being. Hey, are you working on any 3D printed projects? I really hope you are. If so, let me know down in the comments. I make sure to read as many of those as I can and get back to you guys. I'm really excited to see what you guys are cooking up. Thanks so much for watching our video. We'll have another Prop 3D video coming out next week. We're gonna be mixing it up a little bit. We'll have some of this Boolean Gemini build. We'll have stuff on that Form 2 printer that we showcased earlier. We'll have a whole bunch of other 3D printed goodness coming for your faces. So you better subscribe if you haven't already. That's all for this week. Take care and happy printing.